I was always somebody very interested in understanding inequality and poverty and opportunity, and I always viewed legal institutions and policies as playing a really critical role in understanding uh, those key questions. I'm also very much uh, an advocate of sort of evidence-based policy, which is often lacking in a lot of parts of the legal system. whether it's cash welfare, um, health insurance programs, or food stamps. Hispanics in particular are less likely to participate in those programs, even relative to other racial and ethnic groups. There's been a big literature in uh, the fields of economics and public health trying to understand why people in general don't take up these programs. And the standard explanations have been things like uh, lack of information about how to sign up for the programs or high transaction costs. And there's also the phenomenon that a lot of these programs are highly stigmatized, which means that people may not participate. There's also growing work suggesting that social networks really matter for people when they sign up for programs because you learn how to sign up uh, or it becomes less stigmatizing when you see other co-ethnics in your network participating in these programs. But we wanted to explore the phenomenon of whether these social networks could sometimes not just increase take up but actually inhibit take up via the spread of fear. And the fear that we speculated might be happening more in recent times is fear that's invoked by tougher immigration enforcement. This was a program that was rolled out in October 2008 and really expanded under President Obama's administration. And it represented a really big change in uh, federal immigration enforcement, whereby because of fingerprint matching databases, it all of a sudden became much easier to figure out whether an arrested individual uh, was, for instance, unlawfully present in the country. We looked at this rollout of the Secure Communities Program across Across various counties in the U.S. to look at whether Hispanic citizens then started to reduce their take up of programs like food stamps and SSI. And we found dramatic reductions of up to 20 to 40 percent reductions in take up of these programs. And again, that's coming from Hispanic citizens who are themselves immune from deportation. And yet because the prevalence of mixed status families, they themselves are now forgoing private benefits for which they are eligible because of this fear uh, that's coming from potentially others in their network who may be susceptible to immigration enforcement. Participation in programs like food stamps and SSI has very beneficial long-term impacts for health outcomes. So for instance, participation in food stamps among children substantially decreases metabolic syndrome in adulthood. It substantially reduces things like child poverty. I think one part of our finding here is in many ways potentially this was an unintended spillover effect of immigration enforcement. Did policymakers anticipate that by having more intensive immigration enforcement it would have this spillover effect to safety net participation? I'm not sure that they necessarily anticipated that, but we think that's really important for government policies moving forward because it suggests that if it's the same entity that is viewed by you know, residents and citizens as both both a benefactor to some extent because it's the government that provides these benefits as well as an enforcer of things like immigration policy then it might be really important to account for how the government interacts with citizens in different parts of their lives to better understand how we should design and craft uh, different types of policies. Secure Communities, which was temporarily suspended in 2014, has since been reactivated by President Trump in 2017. Compared to the last couple of years prior to 2017, there's definitely been an increase in the number of detainers and removals under the Secure Communities program. So that does represent a more recent ramp up in terms of immigration enforcement. A second feature is that a greater share of the removals are for individuals who've been arrested 
code for low-level misdemeanor and petty offenses. So for instance, if you look at the types of offenses that then trigger the fingerprint match and ultimate removal, the number one category of offenses under the Trump administration is traffic-related offenses. In our work, we actually have found that the fear that might be induced by immigration enforcement seems to be larger in parts of the country in which a greater share of the detainers or removals are coming from these lower level offenses. And so we think that if our results could be extended to a more recent time period, that the fact that the current administration has really uh, prioritized removal of individuals arrested for these lower level offenses, that may only intensify fear even relative to the previous iteration of secure communities and could further uh, reduce take up of these safety net programs.